Hi there, my name is Aaron Short and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm talking about these in-ear monitors. Now you know for many years I thought I didn't like these at all. I didn't like wearing earplugs on stage. I didn't like the thought of wearing in-ear monitors on stage. I want to hear the speakers. I want to feel the air move. I want to hear the electric tube amp in the room. I want to hear the speaker in the room. And I still feel that way. I love it. You interact with the sound in a different way to in-ear monitors. Of course then we had the lockdown. I had no choice but to use them for my live streaming concerts and video reviews. So lately I've been traveling light to gigs. I take the TC Helicon Play acoustic pedal, which actually has a headphone jack built in and some microphones in the pedal in case you want to blend in some of the room sound. And I've been using the Cole Clark. I just think this guitar sounds big and fat and yet still direct and punchy. And I quite like it in the headphones as well. So I'm very happy with the rig. But someone asked me the other day about in-ear monitors and I actually just got some extra ones. I want to review them today. I know it's weird to review headphones because you can't hear them, but at least I can give you my thoughts on them as we go. So let's do this in order of price. The first pair of headphones that I was using on the live streams were the KZ AS10 from Amazon. They're around $60 and they're just a fantastic value. I've recommended them before on the channel and I bought these as another pair to keep as a backup in my case at all times. Now I'm using the inner monitors at gigs. Have to say, using those inner monitors at gigs has been great. You hear everything clearly. You hear everything in stereo. You can choose to blend in the ambient noise if you want or not at all. The only downside really is that you can't hear people when they're talking to you to make a request of a song. It's the only thing I've found so far. But having things like that direct sound, no outside noise, and no chance of feedback has been really great for me. I'm really enjoying it. But these are great for the price, and I'll be comparing these to some more expensive ones, the KZ AS10. After purchasing those, I actually bought some custom Ultimate Ears in ear monitors at the NAM show, which were molded to my ear shape and more expensive than, well, I think about the same price of all of these put together that I'm showing you today. I didn't like them, I didn't feel the fit was good. They were moving around in my ears, my ears were making noises, or they were making noises in my ears, whatever. I just didn't like them, I got a full refund for those. I do believe that custom in-ears are the way forward if they're done correctly, but obviously you've got to get the right mold and you've got to get the right headphones for you. So be careful with that. I didn't have a good experience with having custom in-ear monitors made for myself, but I will try again one day in the future. Having said that, when I got that money back, I purchased these. These are the Shure. And these are the 535s. Now these have been great to me. They're comfortable. I really enjoy them. I think they sound really good. And I'm very happy with them. I was going to get another pair of these to use for my gigs and leave in my guitar case. I also got incredibly lucky because when I got these ones, they were on sale. Sure, often do sales. In fact, they're on sale right now. But these were on a really big sale. <laughs> I got these really cheap. But at the time of this video, they're a few hundred dollars. So there's a big step up from the ones I just showed you, but I really do think they're worth it. They seem more durable, they're more comfortable, and I think they sound better. So I've really enjoyed these, and I've thought about buying another pair for the gigs. But what I thought was, since there's a sale right now, why not try the 700-ish dollar version? So we've got the $60, the $300, $700, real big steps up here. I want to try those first to see if they're worth the extra money. And maybe I'll use those at home for live streams and these at gigs or vice versa. So that's the test today. I'm going to play this loop. And I'm going to switch between them. I just recorded that with the guitar. The guitar is flat apart from the face sensor is at one o'clock on here and the mids are cut completely and it's on the new FC out mode, so the new mode for the Cole Clark preamp. I am just gonna switch between them and tell you what I think, what my experience is. Is it worth you spending the extra money on any of these in-ear monitors? Should you go for the cheapest ones? Is it worth going for the other ones? I'll just give you my opinion based on what I'm hearing through the headphones. Okay, so I hope this is useful and valuable to you. If it is, please subscribe and ring the bell. Let's get on with the test. Let's start with our first pair of in-ear monitors will go from most affordable to most expensive. Here we go.
well, that's no contest. That is absolutely no contest. What I found there was I used to love those KZs, and maybe they're okay at lower volumes, but with this particular pedal at the same volume as the others, the bass is blowing out, and there's something weird in the high end. They do not sound anywhere near as good as the Shores. Now, I already knew that, and I'm sure if I back the volume off a bit on the KZs, they'd be okay. And I still say they're incredible for the money, but the Shores are another level. Like the clarity, the fact they can take the higher um, volumes and things, those Shores are much, much better. Yeah, I really like them. I really like them. Now, the question for me is, will I like the 846s more than the 535 since they are substantially more money again? Let's find out. Actually, they seem a bit muffled. They seem very bass heavy and not crisp on the high end, which is the sound that I like. So let me try the other ones again, see if I'm correct. I think it might be these, the 535. I think I may get another pair of these. They're so good. They're just so good. And they're on sale right now. And if they're ever on sale, uh, for a really deep discount, you should buy them then, definitely. Yeah. Wow, that's really interesting. So I just assumed that the more expensive Shores would be even better, but that's not the case, it seems. They're different, of course, they're different, right? Different drivers. I mean, the presentation, the build quality is excellent on those, but the sound is what's important to me. I've realized the KZs are not that impressive, especially at louder volumes. I mean, they're fine. If you want to get a starter pair to become a backup pair, that's great. They'll get you through anything. But the SE535s are a big jump up from those. And I found that the most expensive ones are not actually a jump up. They sound kind of the same, maybe not quite as loud, not such a crisp high end, a thicker and fuller bass end. Now, if you're into drum and bass, bass driven music, you might prefer that. But for what I do, where I have the guitar and the voice and I want to hear it cut through, I actually prefer the 535s. And that's great because they're also more affordable. So I think I'm going to return the ones I got and switch them out, exchange them for the 535s, have two pairs, one for home for doing the streaming and YouTube videos, and one for my shows so I can always leave them in the bag. They're ready to go. I'm really enjoying it, actually. I, I, I miss using monitors at times but not having the feedback, you know, all, those, all those pros, no feedback, hearing the sound in stereo, blending in ambience if you want it. There's so many pros to that. And the great thing about some of these pedals, like the TC Helicon ones, is that as long as you carry them around with you in your gig bag and an extension cable, if you're at a gig and you can't hear yourself, you can just plug them in, throw them in your ears, and you can hear yourself and the guitar and whatever's in the auxiliary input as well, just fine. So I love that. I love the flexibility of it. I can't believe I didn't use them before and I'm really enjoying using them at my shows now. So I hope this has been useful for you. I'll leave my affiliate links in the description below to all these products. But for me, the Shaw SE535s are excellent, and that's what I'll be using for the near future. So until next time, take care, be well. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.